welcome to expand and factorize single brackets um, just before we start a reminder that there is a notes chapter available for this video just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video now to begin with we're going to expand brackets and expanding brackets means simply that we multiply everything inside of a bracket by what is outside and so for today I'm going to be using um, the idea of multiplication grids. You may have used these uh, for multiplying uh, large numbers. We're going to use it here just so we can make sure we definitely multiply every element by every element that is required. And so it's saying that we are going to multiply 3 by everything that's inside of the bracket. And so I'm going to place 2x at the top and also plus 4. And I'm going to multiply those two together in order to get my result. So I'm going to do 3 times 2x. So the first thing here is 3 times 2 is 6, but that was 3 times 2x, so it's 6x. And 3 times positive 4, well 4 times 3 is 12, and it's a positive. And so my solution here is that that is 6x plus 12. For the next one it is 2 being multiplied by 3a minus b, so I'm going to place a 2 at the front and 3a at the top and negative b at the top and I'm then going to multiply so 2 times 3 is 6 but it was 2 times 3a so it's 6a and 2 times negative b well 2 times b would be 2b but it is a negative and so my solution is 6a take away 2b If we then move on, we have negative 5 being multiplied by 2x take away 3y. And so I'm going to write a negative 5 at the front and at the top a 2x and a negative 3y. If I do negative 5 times 2, I get negative 10, but it's an x, so it's going to be negative 10x. If I do negative 5 times negative 3, I get a positive, and so I'm going to need plus 15, and it's a y, and so plus 15y. My solution, negative 10x plus 15y. And in our final uh, question, we have x brackets 5x plus y, which means I'm taking x and I'm multiplying it by 5x and I'm multiplying it by a positive y. Now this one we need to be very careful when we are dealing with this because we're multiplying a letter by another letter. If I multiply x by itself well that is x squared but I had five x's and therefore I have five x squareds. In the second part I'm multiplying x by y if you are multiplying two letters which are different, then all we do is write them next to each other, x, y. But it was a positive, and so I need that positive there as well. My solution, 5x squared plus x, y. Now, factorising is the opposite. Uh, we need to find the highest common factor of an expression and divide by it. So we've already got an expression and we want to put the brackets back in. But I'm going to set it out in exactly the same way because actually these multiplication grids are just like the bus stop that you would use for divisions. And so in 6a plus 12, well that would have been um, the uh, the expanded version and so that would be what would be inside of the brackets so they are inside of the blocks so in our grid we've got 6a in one box and plus 12 in the other now what we are looking for when we are factorizing is a number which will divide into both pieces but it does say here highest common factor and so um, obviously 1 will go into everything but there's no point dividing everything by 1 as they would just remain the same. In this case if I look at the numbers 6 and 12 well 2 goes into both of those numbers but again 
there are larger numbers. I could look at three, but there are bigger. The biggest number, which would go into six and into 12, would actually be six. And so that is what I'm going to divide by. I'm going to divide by six in both cases. So how many times does six go into six A? Well, if I divide six A by six, I get A. And if I, I divide 12 by six, I get two. But importantly, this was a positive 12, and so it's a positive two. The answer to this question as a factorized expression would be six brackets a plus two. In eight b plus 10, same situation. These values are what we are going to write inside of the boxes because we need to divide them both by a value. Now here we need to check what will go into eight and into 10. And in this case, there are actually only two numbers that work. It would be one or two. And so we go for the highest, we go with two. And two divides into eight B, it will be four B. If I divided 10 by two, it would be five. And so my factorized version will be two brackets 4b plus 5 and we move on um, now again this is our little bus stop so x squared take away 3x is going to be inside of the boxes and now it comes to the point where we have to decide what the factors are now in this case we're looking for something which would uh, divide into x squared and into negative 3x and if we look at the expression, well, we can see there are there is an x in both parts. x, in this case, is our common factor. And so what we're looking for here is, what would I multiply x by to make x squared? Well, x times x is x squared, and so that is what is going to be at the top. What would I multiply x by to make negative 3x? Well, it would be negative 3. And so our factorized expression here is x brackets x minus three. In our final example, we have two y squared plus eight y. And so I'm gonna write each of those pieces into the blocks. And in this case, we need to have a look and say what will divide into both parts. Now it is clear there is a y in both parts. And so y is going to be a factor. But if we look at the numerical part to it, we have two and we have eight. Is there a number which will go into two and eight? Well, obviously we have the number two. And so in this case, we actually have a factor of two y. We have two factors to come out to the front. And all we are then being asked is, well, what have we multiplied the 2y by to make the two values in the blocks? So 2y times something makes 2y squared. Well, that must be y. 2y times something makes 8y. Well, what do I times 2 by to make 8? It is 4. And so this factorised expression is actually 2y brackets y plus in the final examples we are looking to expand and simplify expressions which means we need to first expand out the brackets and then simplify the result and so we need to first of all just focus on the uh, brackets that we need to expand and so we can set up a little grid for that and we've got three brackets 2x take away 4. So 3 times 2x is going to give me 6x. 3 times negative 4 is going to give me negative 12. And so I can replace those brackets with 6x take away 12. Now I'm keeping them in exactly the same position as they were originally in the question because it is always very important about the orders. Now we are asked to simplify. Now that means to collect like terms. So we need to take our x's and collect them together. So 6x plus 4x gives me 
10x. The negative 12 plus the 3, negative 12 plus 3 is negative 9, and so that is going to be 10x take away 9. Now in this example, the bracket that we're expanding is actually at the end, and so what I'm actually going to do here is I'm just going to split the expression into two pieces. And the reason for that is just that I want to make sure that I get the correct response for this X section at the end. And you'll notice here that this one actually has negative two, it's a subtraction. So we've got a negative two in front of the brackets and an X and a plus three. And so in this case, I have negative two X and I have negative two times positive three is negative 6. If I now write the results of this into the expression that I began with, it was 6x plus 3, but I'm going to subtract 2x and subtract 6. And that means when we collect together our like terms, that is 6x take away 2x, which is 4x, and it is plus 3 take away 6, which is negative three. In the third example, we've got two sets of brackets. And so for these ones, we're going to have to do two separate pieces. And so again, if we just separate out the two sections, I've got five brackets, two X plus one, and that's going to give me 10 X plus five. And in the other piece, I have three brackets x plus four, and so I have three x plus 12. And now if I bring those back together, that is 10 x plus five, and these are all positive, so plus three x plus 12. And if I collect together my like terms again, that is 10 x plus three x, is 13x and it is plus 5 plus 12 which is plus 17. In the final question same again I'm going to split into two pieces so that I can focus on each one so that is 3 brackets 3x take away 2 so 3 times 3x is 9x 3 times negative 2 is negative six and then in the second piece this is a negative three so I'm going to put a negative three at the front negative three times 2x take away four negative three times 2x is negative 6x and negative three times negative four well that is a positive and it's going to be positive 12 and so now if I put the four results from the boxes I've got 9x take away 6, take away 6x plus 12. And if I collect together my like terms, that is 9x take away 6x, which is 3x, and it is negative 6 plus 12, and so that is plus 6. And so we end with the exam question. It came from an Excel paper, June 2017, Foundation Paper 2. Uh, so it is a calculator question um, if you wanted to use one, although I don't think it's going to be that, that much use in this situation. Um, so in part A, we are asked to factorise 5 take away 10m. And so because we are factorising, um, we're going to uh, just draw our little boxes. And in two pieces, place inside the two parts of our expression, take away 10m, and then we need to decide what is the common factor. So what number is going to divide into 5 and into 10m? And so if you have a look at that, I think it's quite clear, they're both in the 5 times table, so 5 is going to be our factor. And so then all we need to do is our division. So how many 5s go to 5? It is 1. How many times is 5 going to negative 10m? Well, it's going to be a negative. 5 goes into 10 twice, and it's going to be m. So our final answer to this 
the factorised version is going to include the brackets 5 brackets 1 take away 2m. And then we come to part B. Factorise fully 2a squared b plus 6ab squared. Now, before we get going with this question, I just want to point out the difference between the two questions. The first one just said factorise. The second one is saying factorise fully. That is an indication from the examiners that there is an extra little step with this. Because it's asking for factorise fully, that means there's more than one factor that is required. And so as we set it up, we do the same as we did before. We are going to look for the two sections of our expression, 2a squared b and plus 6ab squared. And in this case, what we're going to have to do is decide what are all of the common factors. So um, let's start with just the numerical part. So if we're looking at 2 and 6, what is the highest common factor of 2 and 6? Well, that is going to be 2. Um, if we then go to the a squared and the a, so in both cases there is something to do with a, and therefore a will also be a factor. And finally, if we look at the b's, well there is a b and a b squared, and therefore there is also a b. We've got three factors this time, 2ab. And so we need to then just do our division like we have in the previous questions, but we just need to be really careful. Um, taking each piece as, as we go. So how many times is 2 going to 2? Well, that is once, so we don't need to write that down. How many times is 2 going to 6? It is 3. How many times does a go into a squared? Well, that is a. How many times does a go into a? Well, that is 1, so we don't need to write it down. How many times is b going to b? That is 1, so we don't need to write it down. How many times is b squared going to, uh, sorry, b going to b squared? It is b. And so this time, our fully factorised version is going to be 2ab brackets a plus 3b. And that is factorised fully because we've taken all of the possible factors out. If you hadn't spotted one of those factors, you would still get one of the marks as long as you factorised it in some way. But because of the fully, you must make sure that you take as many factors and the biggest possible factors as possible possible.